Today we're untangling the absolute rat's nest that is USB-C and Thunderbolt. No clickbait, no fluff. In this video we are tracing the history from its 2011 light peak roots all the way to the current Thunderbolt connections. We'll break down why the same shaped plug can vary in speed by 4,000% how to identify every version by its birthmark, and why Apple basically forced Intel to stop using glass cables. Let's get into it. For those of you new to the channel, I'm Anton, a power engineer, industrial mechanic, and a Red Seal electrician. We cover all kinds of products and topics in an approachable way for the average everyday person. I'm glad you found us. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. The origins of Thunderbolt, it was originally called Light Peak. And that's mostly because as Intel was designing this new standard, they thought that they would be using fiber optic cables to blast laser beams all the way through the cable from one end of the connector to the other. It was the future, but it was expensive. Apple looked at the price tag and said, copper will do just fine. So Intel pivoted and Thunderbolt 1 launched in 2011 on the MacBook Pro. It was the first time we saw PCIe and DisplayPort data together in the same wire. Thunderbolt 1 and 2 used the mini DisplayPort shape. Thunderbolt 1 was 10 gigabits per second, which was lightning fast compared to USB 2.0, which was the standard at the time, at 480 megabits per second. It was like bringing a gun to a knife fight. Thunderbolt 2 arrived in 2013. It didn't change the plug, it just bonded the two 10 gigabit per second channels into one 20 gigabit per second pipeline. To spot the difference, check the logo. Intel started putting a little two next to the Thunderbolt. Real creative, guys. In 2015, Thunderbolt 3 ditched the mini display port and moved over to the standard oval USB-C shape. This is when the world broke. Suddenly, every port looked the same, but only the rich ones had the brains. Thunderbolt 3 brings lightning speed and performance to USB-C creating one compact port that delivers the fastest, most versatile connection to any dock, display, or data device. USB-C is a format, not a protocol. You can put multiple different protocols over the USB-C shape. So in this case, a Thunderbolt port looks the same as a USB-C 3.2 port. Thunderbolt 3 pushed 40 gigabits per second, then came Thunderbolt 4, which is essentially Thunderbolt 3, the responsible adult edition. It has the same max speed, but it forces manufacturers to support dual 4K monitors. No more, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. It's a mandatory yes, it works. Then Thunderbolt 5 enters. Belkin's Thunderbolt 5 cable, the 240W beast that charges, transfers, and streams like a pro. Meet the Belkin 3.3 feet USB-C Thunderbolt 5 cable, a future-proof powerhouse built for tech addicts who refuse to compromise. With 240W power delivery, it juices up your MacBook Pro or gaming rig in record time, while its Intel certified bandwidth handles 4K streaming, giant file dumps, and multi-device setups without breaking a sweat. If you're tired of juggling chargers, adapters, and laggy transfers, Belkin's Thunderbolt 5 is your plug-and-play savior. Your desk clutter just met its match. It uses PAM3 signaling. If Thunderbolt 4 was a two-lane highway, Thunderbolt 5 is a 12-lane Super Expressway with 80 gigabits per second standard and 120 gigabits per second bandwidth boost for displays. It's for those gamers who want to be able to see the pores on their favorite gamer's face in 8K. Now, how do you spot the difference? If you bought a cable at a gas station, it's just your run-of-the-mill USB-C cable and it's not going to support Thunderbolt. The th genuine cables have a lightning bolt logo and a number next to it. It'll have a three, or a four, or a five, or a six, or a seven, or an eight. If it doesn't have a number, it's probably just a regular old USB-C cable. 
You could also look for the passive versus active labels. Long Thunderbolt 3 cables require a chip in each end to help keep the speed required across the cable length. So an active cable will usually have a bigger head on it to make room for all of the electronics that are needed. If your two meter long cable was $5, it's not active. It's just sad. And one of the main advantages of going with Thunderbolt, because it can transfer DisplayPort data and power and audio and a lot of other data utilizing the PCIe lanes, it's becoming more and more the default, especially for gamers, because you can connect one cable from your computer or laptop into your monitor. You can even daisy chain, so you can connect multiple monitors through connecting the cable from one monitor to the next monitor to the next, and it'll still also allow you to plug in keyboard, mouse, headphones, other peripherals into the extra USB ports in the back of that monitor. So it makes cable management a lot easier. You're unlikely to see Thunderbolt start to pop up on your consumer grade TVs or audio equipment. And that's mostly because HDMI as a standard has the home entertainment space pretty much on lockdown. But Thunderbolt is quickly becoming the de facto standard for PC gaming and most PC setups. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. So hopefully this helped you understand really what Thunderbolt even is and why does my Thunderbolt cable look the same as a USB-C cable and why don't they work interchangeably? The big key is to look for that Thunderbolt logo. If you don't see it, it's just regular USB. It's just over a USB-A, a B, or a C. So to summarize, Thunderbolt is the VIP lane of the USB-C connector. Check your version numbers, check your logos, and don't blame the port when the cable could be your problem. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions that we didn't answer here. We can always do a part two. And tell me what your favorite feature of the Thunderbolt cable is. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. and We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.